Hello everyone, welcome to Life Questions. I'm your host, Bill Harris. For the next half hour, we will attempt to give you scriptural insight and biblical perspective to questions about life that you, our viewers, have mailed to us. Now, we at 44 appreciate your respect for the Word of God, which we share, and so we have invited four local ministers to prayerfully consider and review the questions that you have provided to us, and they are here with some answers. So I want you to meet them right now. First of all, we have Pastor Patrick Kamler of Westminster Christian Church. He is certainly no stranger to us here at TV44 as our producer and anchor of the Sports Report. Next we have Pastor Brad Taylor of the Lima Community Church, followed by Shelley Head, who is itinerant minister, who travels but is also located near Wooster, Ohio. And rounding out our panel, we have Pastor Janet Wind of the Cornerstone Church in Lima, Ohio. Happy to have you all with us today. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you. Right. Now, we've gotten some very interesting questions here for our discussion today, and I'd like to lead off with the role of the Holy Spirit. What do we view as the role of the Holy Spirit in these last times, considering the fact, pers personally, that in the Old Testament, the only ones who really had the Holy, Holy Spirit were like kings or prophets or priests. Now he dwells, dwells with inside of each of us. So what is his role in us? What do you think? Well, I, yeah, I think the Holy Spirit really works as, you know, Jesus refers to him as the helper, as the counselor, the one who will, you know, will come and, and speak for you if you have uh, situations where maybe you don't know what to say or your human wisdom will, will fail you, which we've, we've all kind of had those experiences probably every week on Sunday. We, we might have those times where, where that fails us. But one thing that I notice, and, and I've, I've read this story so many times and I'm always encouraged by it, is if you look at the disciples, the night Jesus was, was arrested and he was crucified, like they, they ran for the hills, Peter mm -hmm. denied him, they all were, were cowering, they were all afraid of what the authorities were gonna do to them. And then Jesus comes, he ministers to them, he, 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 he's with them for another 40 days and then Pentecost happens, or he, he goes back up to heaven. Pentecost happens, then the Holy Spirit comes <clears throat> upon them and all of a sudden, these guys are not afraid anymore. Mm. They're not cowards anymore. They go out and they preach boldly. They don't, they don't care who's going to arrest them. They don't care who's going to throw them in prison. They say, we have news about Jesus Christ. He is risen. You killed him. Mm -hmm. And now you better say you're sorry. <laughs> and they go, and going along with that. So, but it's, that, it's, it's the Holy Spirit that activates that. That kind of turns us from, you know, we might have good scriptural knowledge. We might, you know, be moral people or whatever that may be to really being equipped with what God has called us to do when whatever, um, whatever vein that takes, whatever, however that manifests in our lives. Okay, very good. I also think of Holy Spirit as comforter. <clears throat> comforter. Yes. That, and so there's that's times, titles, yeah, yeah it's, it's times where angst and worry, we talked about in, in another episode, um, that the comforter, the Holy Spirit draws near. And there's yeah. that nearness, that closeness that, that God as Holy Spirit comes and brings himself to us. Yeah, absolutely. I think there are some profound um, realities from scripture that we, that we just ought to be aware of, you know, truths that continue to, to hold true. So you referenced the Old Testament mm -hmm. and you referenced the day of Pentecost. And I think mm -hmm. these are, um, you know, from an Old Testament perspective, sometimes we forget that the Holy Spirit was present at creation. Mm -hmm. You know, the yeah. Spirit hovered at, over the waters, the mm -hmm. chaos. Yes. And um, the Spirit is not, uh, even though something changed at Pentecost, something different happened there, this, that wasn't the, the introduction of the Holy Spirit. I right. mean, the Holy Spirit right. is, and I know you, you didn't mean to imply that, but the, the reality that, um, you know, when Jesus left mm -hmm. earth, he said that, he was going to send one that would make yes. it better. Yes. And, um, you know, to, to think that, that for those disciples to even be able to conceive of something that could have been better than being with Jesus. Hmm. And yet that's the same spirit that dwells with us today right. that yeah. gives us access to that power that, mm -hmm. you know, awakens something in us that could not otherwise be awakened. Very and when you think when Jesus was on the earth, if he was at your house or your house. He couldn't be at my house at the same That's time, right. but That's right. the Holy Spirit is with all of us, Everyone. which each yeah. and every one of us. And That's I good. love how the Bible tells us that he's the one that's gonna lead us into all truth. He's our teacher, he's our leader, he's our guide. He, he is the one that is going to, to direct us. And um, 
and and so he's he's only going to tell us the things that he is shown mm -hmm. and um, I just love that I love that that God said I'm empowering you I'm, I'm giving you the power to live out the life and the destiny and the purpose that I've called you to live I'm not leaving you powerless I'm giving you the power in the person of the Holy Spirit to be able to do that yeah. yes. you know one of the things I appreciate just about the conversation we're having is that we we are acknowledging together that the Holy Spirit is a person. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we had a, a series recently at our church on the Holy Spirit, and um, that was really the foundational truth that we wanted to establish was that this, the Holy Spirit is not um, uh, some like power to be accessed, right. or yeah. it's not something that you like can pop the top and pour some out of, but the Holy Spirit <laughs> is a person. Yeah. This is one of the persons of the Trinity. Yeah. Not an it. That's right. right. Yeah. Right. And so for us to refer to the Holy Spirit as a person, I yes. think is appropriate Absolutely. biblically. And I think there's an element of this, and this should get lost in the conversation because we all kind of, kind of come from a from a background and from a faith tradition where we recognize kind of the power and the influence of the Holy Spirit in our ministries, in our lives. But there are those who don't recognize that for whatever reason, who don't see that as a as a reality. You know, there's a there's a playbook, there's a script that this is what I do on this particular Sunday, and I, I don't deviate from that. I'm not saying the Holy Spirit can't be present in all of that stuff as well, but I think there's an element of that too that we should acknowledge that we, we're talking about the Holy Spirit active, vibrant in our lives, like well, this is just the way it is, but there are probably folks who are watching at home, there might be other pastors even, that are, are hearing that maybe for the first time thinking, I, I don't know if that's a reality in my life. Maybe don't even necessarily agree with that. So it, it's interesting to kind of see the different viewpoints that, that people take with that. And, and I hope that this isn't the first time that <laughs> you're hearing about the Holy sure. Spirit and, and being active in our lives. And I think there's a, there's a balance to be, there's a tension to work through between where do I let the Spirit guide or where does the Spirit guide me versus kind of where does my own decision-making mm -hmm. process kind of come into that. And I think there's a tension there that is different probably for each of us, depending on the situation, depending on what we're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the Bible makes a clear distinction too between walking in the flesh mm -hmm. and walking mm -hmm. in the spirit. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. And I have found that we can maintain, if we try to, we can maintain the presence of God yes. in our lives by walking in his spirit. And, and so the other day I rearranged my mission statement to put in there that my quality of life is directly linked to the quality time that I spend mm -hmm. in his presence. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I'm finding that's a big comfort for, for me because you know what it is, you get so busy in everyday life, sometimes sure. your mind isn't on him, but then maybe you ought, offer just a quick prayer. Lord, thank you. Or Lord, I love you. Or Lord, help me here. And then continue what you're doing. And, and it adds quality to your life because yeah. he, he assists you. Lord, yeah. deal with this traffic jam, right? Whatever, there you go. <laughs> yes, that's whatever a good one. Is. Yeah. Well, how well, about the... It, go I'm ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry. Go, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, even that so many times I think people don't even know it's happening because it's just, it's that inner witness on the inside of you that, you know, maybe you're to do something or not to do something or say something or not say right. something or go here or go there or feel led to go a certain way, you know, mm -hmm. and, and then you find out a reason why later. So just yeah. becoming sensitive to him Absolutely. leading, you know, when mm -hmm. you turn to the left or turn to the right, I'll say, this is the way walkie in it. You know, you're like your GPS system. Exactly. <laughs> it, well, you know what? Speaking of that, it was fascinating. One time I was on a business trip. We were on a plane. And when I get on a plane, I like to think that when I look out the window, if I see clouds, I like to envision that the pilots just have perfect sight. I don't know why. I just like to envision that. But we were on this small plane, and on the way up to this uh, meeting, it was perfectly blue sky, just beautiful. On the way back, we were in a small plane. There were just a few seats, and I could see straight through to see exactly what the pilots were seeing, and we flew right into a cloud bank. Mm -hmm. And I will never forget hearing God say to me that, um, look at what the pilots are doing. And they were not flying the plane by looking out the window. There no. wasn't anything they could see. They were looking at the, the radar box. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. were looking at that, and they were flying the plane by that. And it was like, that's who I am to you. Mm. I'm, good. I'm good. The Holy Spirit's like a radar on the inside of you to direct you, to lead you, to guide you. We don't know the future. We don't know what's ahead. We don't know, but he does. And right. it's always safe right. to yeah. follow him. It's good. Yeah. Peace. And I guess too, in the final analysis, we think that the, 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 the Holy Spirit has 
resurrection power. Because yes. I, was, I was preaching a funeral for my, my late cousin just last week. And I mentioned how that on, on the resurrection day in the rapture, that you know, the same spirit that resurrected Jesus yes. will resurrect her. That's right. Mm -hmm. And many so, others yeah, who yeah, have right. gone on before yeah. us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it nice to know that <laughs> out of all the works of the Holy Spirit, he also resurrects from the dead. Yes. Yep. It's an incredible. Yeah, and and, and the, the rapture is something that I, I don't know about you, but it's something I really look forward to. I'd like to be on this side, those, among those that are alive, of course. But we <laughs> never know how that's going to work out. But in any event, um, we're, close, we're, we're close to a break time right now. Why don't we take this break right now and uh, we'll come back and we've got some other things. We've got some other goodies in our bag here to talk <laughs> about. And we'll be back to talk about those right after this. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pasture suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back in now. Another very special question that has come up, and it really deals with one of the subjects that is one of my favorites, and that is the power of prayer. The power of prayer. There's an old saying that there's no distance in prayer. I, I just, I love to quote that. What do you think about the power of prayer? Let's, let's talk about its uses and examples of power in prayer, that kind of thing. I think about Jesus in John like 14 through 16, I think, talks so much about hearing the voice of the Father. Mm -hmm. And I only do what the Father tells me to right. do. Well, how does he hear that voice? Mm -hmm. And I, I th it has time, spending time, spending yeah. time listening to the Lord. And I think in our culture, at least things I've seen, prayer has become sometimes um, what I want. God, I want you to do this and I want you to do that. And that's not necessarily all inherently bad, but I think for the most part, prayer is to change me. Mm -hmm. Prayer is to open my heart, to help me to submit to Him, to His will. And so, um, yeah, there's great power in prayer because mm -hmm. it's going to conform me more and more into the likeness of Jesus. Excellent. So yeah. Shelley, I, I completely agree that prayer is more for our benefit or to change us. Mm -hmm. But I also think there's the, um, the, the fundamental truth of God's character that even though he is unchanging, um, I actually just read in Exodus 32 this morning, um, the, the episode of the golden calf that mm -hmm. we're all very familiar with and mm -hmm. the, the interaction that God has with Moses coming out of that incident where God has decided what he's going to do and it's mm. not going to be good for the Israelite people. <laughs> and Moses, it doesn't necessarily address prayer, but in Moses' conversation with God, the scripture says God changed his mind. Yes. It actually says yes. God changed his mind. And I think we ought to just recognize that in our interaction with God, in our conversation with God, um, scripture paints a picture of a God who is moved by us, right. who is not... Right static or distant, right, you know, not right. this distant idea, but, yeah. but that we can have this interaction with God that, that may actually change something, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. besides just us. I hope it changes right, us, but, right. no, you know, it may really yeah. change something. Yeah. 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 And, and I was, I, I guess in my mind, I'm thinking when I say I want this, I want this. Sure. More like getting too involved in wanting physical, and not that he doesn't care about those right, things, but right. I want a new car. Yeah. I want a new, yeah. you know, yeah. but he does care about our lives. He does, he does. care about the yeah. details. I agree. Yeah. I, I agree. think you're saying he's more than just our Santa Claus. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah, that's right. And yes, I think sir. the Bible teaches us that we are workers together with God. You know, we're co-laborers yes, with him. Yeah. And one of the ways yeah. that we co-labor with God is through prayer yeah. that we, Jesus taught the disciples how to pray. And he said, one of the ways that we see his kingdom come and his will be done is through prayer. And yeah. what a privilege that he's given us his name and he's given us all of these things and that we can pray the will of God mm -hmm. and partner with him in seeing that Amen. be done. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah. I, I believe the Bible teaches us that that it's, it's men speaking, plurally men, women, but mm -hmm. mankind, um, who have the authority in the earth. And so yeah. God wants to move, but he's wanting us to partner with him 
Um, and that's why he sent Jesus in the form of man to, yeah. to die as a man because man lost dominion. He sent Jesus back to, to gain that dominion, give that back to us mm. and, and said, I'm, I want you to partner with me and mm. to see my will and yeah. my kingdom come. And what an honor and what a privilege that we can do that and stand in the gap that right, we right. can make a difference, that yeah. God's, yeah. God's heart can be turned. Yeah. We've, we've, we've seen you know t-shirts bumper stickers it's not about religion it's about a relationship mm -hmm. you know yeah. we've seen that maybe we, we've said that our, ourselves at times but really you know prayer is kind of how we how we begin to build and develop that relationship yes. and, and it's great you mentioned the story of Moses and the prayer and, and God kind of relenting or changing his mind from what he was right. going to do right it also tells us that God spoke to Moses as a friend yes you know they had that closest they, they had that mm -hmm. relationship to Absolutely. where you know not that you know, Moses was giving God ideas on how to run the universe or anything like that. <laughs> but you, you could sense that closeness right. that other people have tried to emulate. The Israelites were intimidated by, you know, God would show up and go, whoa, 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 you just talk with Moses. We'll be over here apparently making a cow. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be over here disobeying you. You go talk to Moses. That's okay. So it's really kind of developing that relationship and, and just kind of the idea that we do pray according to motives that are not pure. I mean, that's what mm -hmm. James says. You, you don't have because you don't ask. And when, and you, when ask, you, do you ask, you ask with se <laughs> selfish motives. <laughs> right, so right. when you get something, you'll spend it on whatever you yeah. want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's that element of, and I think, I think you said this also, that when you pray, it's not so much that you change the situation, but that God through your prayers changes you, yeah. which I think yeah. is very important. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I recall in my uh, days of, oh, in my career, television news, going to the White House on four or five occasions. And I remember the first time going there, all the hoops you've got to jump through <laughs> to get into the Oval Office. And when you think about when you're there in front, in front of that desk in the Oval Office, you are before the most powerful man in the world, you know, politically speaking. Right. However, you can drop down on your knees <laughs> and immediately the angels will usher you into the throne room for an immediate audience with the creator of the universe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So good. Yeah. It's profound. Yeah. Quicker than you can even get yeah. into the White House. Isn't yeah. that amazing? And look, I mean, the access yes. through prayer yeah. is what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's, it's remarkable. Remarkable. Absolutely, Absolutely. remarkable. That's and the fact that he listens. That he listens. Right, yeah. <laughs> 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 Take a number, Patrick. I'm busy with that. You never get that. He, he's always responsive. And yes. Sometimes it's 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 easier to get into you know the throne room of God and, and speak a prayer than sometimes it is to get into a church. It depends yeah. on the situation, you know. So yeah, you know, Bill. I think one of the things that um, I think is just a reality for even for us as pastors, and certainly for the people who attend our churches, and I imagine for our viewers today. Is, is just the question of how do you pray? You know, this idea that it's, sometimes it's hard to figure out how to pray. How do you make this a priority? Yeah. And you know, mm -hmm. Janet, you referenced the Lord's Prayer, yeah. the, the reality that Jesus taught us how to mm -hmm. pray. And mm -hmm. I think one of the things that, um, that I take comfort in is when I don't know how to pray, scripture tells me how. Mm -hmm. You know, the Psalms tell me how to pray. There yes. are, there's a Psalm for everything you've been through. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. When you think you're facing the most difficult yeah. thing, there's a Psalm that, you know, David faced that kind of thing too. And yep. um, you know, there's really, there's a lot of comfort in the idea that you know, Paul writes prayers in the, at the end of all of his letters that mm -hmm. are profound prayers that mm -hmm. we can pray. And, we, and we can feel mm -hmm. good that yeah. when we're praying scripture that we're Absolutely. in harmony with what yes. God wants us to be praying. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's turn our attention to another question that, it, that has come in. A, a viewer who said that um, they saw no reason to invite an unbeliever to church because if the unbeliever is not willing to make a change, why bother to invite them? Uh, is that, well, that may be logical to some people, I guess, but it's, well, it's not. Sorry, I was just thinking, I, I was not raised in a Christian home. So at the age of 20, it was an Avon lady that invited me to church. <laughs> no kidding. And if she had made that choice on my outward mm. appearance, I wouldn't know Jesus today. Wow. So always, because we never know what God's doing right. in the heart of right. man always, always mm -hmm. feel free to invite someone to church yes. because it's in the church building, hopefully, mm -hmm. that we're going to be seeing the manifestations of God in our lives. When we have um, spirit-filled worship times, 
that unbeliever may not be able to relate to what's happening, but they're going to see something happening in that room to mm -hmm. other believers, and oh, they're yes. going to they're, they're going to be yes. drawn to attention. It's going to reach into deep places in their soul. Mm -hmm. So let's hope if we're a life-giving church where we're you know truly walking out the things of the Lord, yeah. that person is going to witness the unfolding of the gospel right there right. in the lives of the people. Sure. So yeah, do it. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I think when you when you make a surface judgment like that, like when you look at someone's mm -hmm. life and you don't see anything happening, and, and again, I don't know what particular stats you're using to, to show that, like what are you looking for in that person's life? Hmm. You, you run the risk of actually barring that person from getting to know Jesus better because wow. they might be in a position where they want to learn more. Mm -hmm. You know, they might be curious, they might be, seeker sensitive, you know, that kind of to use that kind of parlance. They might be wanting more, but they might still look a certain way. They might still talk a certain way. And you think this person needs to clean themselves up before they come to church. No, you come to church and that's where you get cleaned yeah. up. Yeah. And through learning more about Jesus, that's where you get cleaned up. I, like you, I was not raised in, in a church, you know, and I was I was welcomed into a community not knowing anything because if I had to wait to know something right. before I came to the church, I might still be waiting to go to a church. I don't know. But yeah. this kind of that idea of, no, you, you invite them wherever they are. Mm -hmm. You let the work of the Holy Spirit do what the work of the Holy Spirit can do. It's, yeah. it's not on you to clean them up, right. right? It's not on you to figure them out and to make them holy. That's the Holy Spirit's job. And you let him do it. Yeah. 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 Any other Absolutely. comments? Okay. Well, another uh, question that came in, and that has to do with how do we in church deal with offenses? You know, the Bible says offenses are going to come. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just life. It's reality. We are all going to be offended in life. But you know, that's the question of Absolutely. how we deal with offenses. Uh, and there are all kinds of ways that we deal with offenses, aren't there? Some of them are right. Some of them are wrong. And <laughs> the Bible does give us some, uh, some guidelines about that. For one thing, if I'm offended... I guess I'm not supposed to sit there and just pout and wait for the person who offended me to come to them. The Bible tells me to lay my gift aside and go to them and, and let them know. I mean, how, how do we deal with offenses? And what happens when we fail to deal with them? What, what happens to us? Any, any? I think the, you know, the, the, ans the simple answer to the question is we ought to deal with them graciously. We ought to keep short accounts mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it, I would hope, and, and, you know, I run the risk of preaching to myself here, I guess. But, <laughs> all, you know, all of us. Yeah, right, right. I mean, I would hope that, um, that in, in just the journey, it would be hard to offend me. That, um, and, and that in those moments when I'm offended, that we do have the sort of relationship where we can interact and I can say, here's, here's kind of what I felt or how I, you know, read that. But, mm -hmm. but I just think about the reality that... Um, Jesus dealt with our offense very mm. graciously. You know, God continues to pour out grace and forgiveness. And um, our goal as Christians is to become more like him. And so I would hope that we would have a lot of grace and a lot of forgiveness. Absolutely. And um, I think we ought to take that to a far we, extent. Yeah, absolutely. And if we don't forgive, we're really the ones that are held captive. That's you right. know, that's, that's right. so yes, yeah. exactly. And um, you, you're not harming the other person, you're actually harming yourself. Yeah. And um, to be able to live free and to be able to live whole, you have to be able to live offense free. Right. And uh, so, absolutely. And yeah. th the beautiful thing, Jesus said, bring it to me. You know, mm -hmm. we can bring it to him. Yeah. And he, 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 he experienced offense, but he didn't live offended. Right. Yeah. And um, right. so. Yeah. 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 And typically when someone offends you, most of the time, they're not meaning to do it. You right. know, there's that, there's been some type of miscommunication. Right. You know, I, I'm the director of Royal Family Kids here in Allen County. When I do trainings every year, one of the things that I do is I ask everyone, how many of you are, are going to camp and you're planning to offend somebody? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and there's a chuckle and no one raises their hands. Yeah, mostly no one raises their <laughs> hands, you know. So I say, look, no one is coming to camp to offend you. No one is coming to camp to ruin your week or to give you a bad time or anything like that. So if someone offends you by something they say, and we train this as well as kind of the biblical standard, like go to that person as quickly as you can and say, hey, yeah. look, what you said offended me. And because no one is here meaning to offend you, it can be dealt with and it can be, you know, dispatched and move on. Because if you don't, there's bitterness 
Absolutely. There's all this other kind of stuff that, that comes up, and then before you know it, relationships have been uh, have been irrecoverably damaged. Mm -hmm. You have people that don't want to be a part of it anymore, and and and, and honestly, it is hard yeah. to go to someone who has offended you and say, "Here's look what you've done." Yeah. You know, I had to do that once on staff when I was at Lima Community. I had to go to someone and say, "Brad, let me tell you." No, it's kidding. <laughs> it wasn't you. It wasn't you. <laughs> but you know, that, that's hard at first because you don't really know how that's going to turn out. But it worked really well. We were able to resolve our issues and, and move on as friends. But it, it's so very important to to do that and to realize that 99 times out of 100, no one is meaning to offend you. Right. Yeah. And I think, like I said in our previous episode, sometimes if you're easily offended, that's something you need to look at in your own yeah. heart. Right. Yeah. Like if everything bothers you, if everything mm -hmm. is easily getting to you, that's something that you need to turn inward and go, okay, what, what's going what's on here? Going what's going on? Right. Yeah, Absolutely, because right. there's something yeah. going on. And usually right. it's, deeper, you know, yeah. we're, look, yeah, we're looking through colored glasses. There's, there's yeah. you know, rose colored or blue colored. We're looking through and Our we're seeing lens. everything yeah. through that lens. Yeah. And it's, yeah. yeah. Patrick, I appreciate just the, the idea that most people don't set out to offend. Right. You know, one of the right. things that um, I'm sure all of us see as pastors as we counsel people um, is, you know, a, a married couple or, you know, people in relationship and what to whatever degree who at some point back in their history, one has offended the other right. or, or both yeah. have offended. And, um, you know, to those couples, I try to remind them that, you know, if you could get back to that root cause, mm -hmm. you know, that day in all likelihood, your spouse didn't wake up and think, I'm going to, today's the day. Right. You know, right. I'm going to do all I can to <laughs> ruin years for this. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, Absolutely. it's just not, not reality. Right. And yet, because we don't deal with it quickly, mm -hmm. we tell stories in our own heads. You know, we mm -hmm. write a story about how bad this is. Mm -hmm. And again, we get back to worry and anxiety, you know, kind of stuff. But, right. but yeah, you know, assume positive intent of yes. the other person. That's most good. likely, That's they, really good. most likely mm -hmm. they did not set out to ruin your day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. That, that is very positive. Very positive. But I think if you go back to the idea of forgiveness too, you know, Jesus said that if we forgive, then he'll forgive. Yeah. If we don't forgive, we're not going to be forgiven. And so I think that idea of forgiveness is, is the kind of the blueprint that Jesus left for us right. in relationships. Right. Because we are going to have disagreements. We are going to offend and we're going to be offended. It's part of life. Yep. But yeah, the going to and having the best yeah. feeling of how what that person was thinking in advance is so right. good right. so good gonna have to end it there and it's a very good very positive note to end on thank you very much listen you all have contributed so much in the way of content conversation content that i'm sure somebody out there is going to be blessed by all of this and we thank you for being with us this weekend for last week as well that's so our program you. for today we'll be back again with a brand new panel on next week until then i'm bill harris have a wonderful day Bye bye You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.